Okay then Raj, question number one from Christopher. Do you remember much about the war and how did it affect your life? God, I'd take me half an hour to answer that question. The, the, I remember mostly about the war, of course I was six when it started and 14 when it, no sorry, 12 when it finished. Um, I remember mostly about being bombed, as one would. I can remember, and some silly bugger has written in the Panath Times that not a bomb fell on Panath during the war. I said, he's joking. St. All Saints Church was bombed, and there was only the shell of the walls left. Wow. Apart from all the houses that I know, and I could go round now showing people which, where there are new houses built, where yeah. there are old ones bombed. And <clears throat> one bomb uh, fell in the back garden of the house across the road from us and uh, blew some of our windows out. And um, That must have been very night, scary. Eh? That must have been very scary. Uh, well, it was a front door window that went actually and they had leaded pictures, you know, leaded glass and that all went in and that door uh, was then uh, boarded up, the glass part, the door was itself worked all right, the glass part was boarded up and at the uh, end of the war, when they removed the boards and glass was put in, I remember crying because it was all different and I I didn't like it like that. <laughs> and, uh, that's what, but seriously, well, uh, the, the bombs were the, and the incendiary bombs that came down uh, and they would burn out, they fell in the road or on a flat piece of ground somewhere, they would burn out and they would be left with a fin which was a little bit longer than that mug, metal fin and a pile of dust and we kids we collected these things um, but uh, that's what I know I remember the food uh, shortage in a sense I was never hungry but I know that we had to mix butter with margarine to make a, a spread which was acceptable to everybody because otherwise because you had so little butter I remember there was a shortage of eggs until we had our own chickens and then there was no problem uh, sort of thing nothing I never knew anyone who was killed in the war I don't think any of my family were not as far as I remember uh, and the same applied to the first world war uh, the only person I know knew of that was good in the first world war was Aunt Doris's husband. But uh, the family seemed to get away very well out of it, really. Does that answer your question? <laughs> okay, the next one. Why was Great Grampy so grumpy ah. and never laughed? I can't answer that. It's true, though. As I was 12 years old, before I heard a grown man laugh and joke, and that was when I started uh, following Panath Cricket Club and went and became a scorer for them. I and the men and laughed and joked, and, and I was amazed because they were all adults, and my father had never seen him laugh. Uh, why? I don't know, because of his upbringing down in Cornwall. Ah, I really don't know. Can't answer. Uh, when did you get your first dog? First and what dog, was your favourite dog? Uh, well, the first dog was Doofus. He didn't live very long. Do you remember him, uh, Rich? Yes, yes. Um, we had him as a puppy. and. I think that would have been in the, it was, must have been just after I retired, and I retired in 1993. So it would have been within the next two years, I think. 
Yes, I'm sure there's a picture of me playing with him as a puppy in the, yeah, when I was around about 25. Yeah, well, and he got run over, not just down the road. Because I have one of these two, and that was the end of him. Ah, uh, silly dog. But he used to make us laugh because he was so, he was funny. We go out in the garden and we had an old plastic watering can and he'd stick his head in the can and run around the garden <laughs> with a watering can on his head <laughs> because he knew it made us laugh. <laughs> and, and he enjoyed doing it and we enjoyed watching it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I remember about him most. He and unfortunately he got run over by a local guy driving a minibus. There we are. And um, Cassie came then. We had Cassie when she was a pup. And we had her until she was 12, 12 to 13, when she uh, had to be put down because she lost use of her leg. Uh, and after that, I had uh, Jonah, who was already six when I had her. And she lasted till she was 14, I think. Did you have a favourite out of those dogs, Mark? Oh, Cassie. Picture up there. <laughs> Picture on the wall. What was so special about Cassie? Well, first of all, she was a lovely looking dog. I mean, the golden retrievers are very attractive. And uh, she was a very well behaved dog. <laughs> but she could, she could make a talk as well. But, uh, there we are. Okay, so what was your best case as a lawyer? And what was your worst case as a lawyer? What was the word tip? What was your worst case? Case. Oh. As a lawyer, and your best. Oh dear, I can't uh, think I have categorised anything into best and worst. But for me, most successful, I can't even tell you what that was now. Uh, I acted for um, the National Union of Blast Furnace Men because their solicitors were up in Newcastle. And they instructed us to do the investigations into accident claims. And uh, I remember that we took one to court which we lost. And that was the guy who had uh, burnt his foot very badly when he uh, put it in the trough of molten metal that ran out of the furnace and was running across the floor and there was a trough. And he tried to jump across it. Now, his case was that he hadn't have tried to jump across it, but he had tripped on something that had been left near it. And uh, we took that case to court because they wouldn't settle it, and we lost. That was the worst case I, was, I lost. Uh, well, I can't tell you what the best was. Because most of the others where we brought cases were settled up court. And then I started doing defence work and I was doing through acting for insurance companies for the last 10, 15 years. I was doing it on the other side, defending cases <coughs> and instructed by insurance companies. Okay, so where would you say is the best place you have ever visited for a holiday? Oh, well, that's a hard one. Best place? Well, I tell you where I'd love to go again, and that's the Seychelles. Uh, and I, we didn't exactly have a holiday there because we flew out to the Seychelles to join a cruise ship, a very small one, that was going to cruise around Madagascar and also go to uh, Tanganyika, I think, that part of the world was all strange to us and the airplane took us to Seychelles and we had two days there before the cruise ship left 
and uh, we walked into <coughs> the town, I can't even remember the name of it, Port St. Louis or something, which was the capital of the island, very, very small island. And I remember sitting in a outdoor uh, restaurant, drinking beer and watching the local girls walk by. And I have that in my mind that Seychelles has the most beautiful women that I've ever seen. Because they were not black, they were dark, they were brown, but they were all so tall and so slim and they walked proudly with their heads up. And I thought they were absolutely gorgeous. So I've always wanted to go back. To That's a lovely memory. Yeah. But uh, their holiday was a disaster because um, the day the ship was due to sail, Jill had a fit and um, we had to go home. Mm. Uh, uh, and that was also the first time and only time I've ever flown first class. Because the only flight we could get back was via Paris and it was first class and I claimed it all on insurance, I mean, it was covered by insurance, mm. uh, so we flew back by Paris. Okay, so what world events have had the most impact on you, not including uh, this not COVID? Including, well, the present one is the one that's had the most impact yeah. on you, without doubt. Um, what world event? I can't think of one, sorry. No, that's fair enough. Uh, do you remember any fads from your youth? So hairstyles, clothing, etc. I can remember whatever was very popular I did not like. I would not I would not join in if the anybody had crew cut, I would not have a crew cut. And uh, wearing teddy boy trousers and things, no way. And um, the Beatles, when they first came on the scene, I didn't like them. I didn't was not at all interested in pop music. Twenty years later, I quite liked the the, the Beatles. <laughs> but, uh, uh, ah, my father likes Ted. <laughs> Richie's exactly the same. <laughs> okay. Right. Um, what was your favourite thing to do for fun? Did you have any hobbies or...? Well, I, I was keen on stamp collecting until I, I was married and then I sort of gave it up. Uh, but I used to spend all my pocket money on uh, on stamps and I had quite a good collection which is upstairs somewhere. Um, and I tried to find out amongst my grandchildren if any of them would want it and not one of them has wanted wanted this collection so uh, it's still there <laughs> i collected stamps as well uh, and, and yeah. hobbies of course uh, otherwise i was uh, keen on on uh, cricket uh, from a very early age i used to go to recreation ground across the road and play cricket with my friends uh, before i was uh, old enough to be in an actual team uh, but cricket was always my favourite sport and rugby came later after I'd gone to Llandovery and learned to play rugby every afternoon there in the season and learned about it when I left there, came back to Penarth, I joined the Old Penarthians when I was then 17 and uh, still a member. <laughs> <clears throat> Did you receive an allowance as a child? I guess he means pocket money or something. Uh, how much and did you save or spend? <laughs> I can remember when I finished in Slendovery and came uh, home to live with my parents at 16. Started my articles with uh, Elizabeth. I was not paid any salary. But my father gave me five shillings a week. That was in 1949. 
I think five shillings then would be something like five pounds now. I don't know. <laughs> but it was enough for me to take a girl to the pictures. Uh, so you spent, you spent rather than saved. I did not save. No. <laughs> no. Uh, um, what are the most important lessons you've learned in life? Oh, what a question. <laughs> what is the most important lesson I've learned in life? Well, I like to think of myself as pragmatic which means that I take things as they come and make the best of them, mm -hmm. the best I can, in the circumstances, without fighting too much against it. Uh, that's about all I can say. Very good. Um, okay. Which is your favourite child? Oh, that's not a fair question. That's, that's why... <laughs> we we weren't going to ask, but... Well, I can answer it. I don't have any favourites. I like to treat all my children the same. Sometimes it's a little difficult. But <laughs> <laughs> and which is your favourite grandchild? Ah, oh, no, no. Again, I haven't got a favourite. I don't know the Australian grandchildren very well. Uh, so it's not really fair. Um, no, I'm, I don't have a favourite. Three boys locally, including Morgan, of course, and uh, two girls and a boy in Greece. I say boy, he's now 32, and it's time he made me a great grandfather. I told him that. <laughs> okay. Um, what would you ask? If you were asking the questions and wanted to ask something interesting about yourself, what sort of question would oh, you goodness. ask? That's quite a good. Oh, if I met someone new, you mean, I want to know something about them. Is that is that what he's getting at? No, I think he means what questions would you ask of yourself to maybe to um, impart some knowledge about yourself that. Everybody would be interested. Well, I talk to myself continually, and uh, usually, I think sometimes uh, I'm two people, and I've got one person answering another person, and I even say, oh, "Is it about time we went upstairs?" You know, and it's a we, like a royal family. <laughs> <laughs> I can't explain that. Uh, well, I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> okay. Um, what new technology have you found to be the most helpful oh, and the most annoying? <laughs> I think the most helpful and most annoying is both the same. <laughs> it's, it's that laptop upstairs, uh, which makes it makes me furious at times because it won't do what I want it to do or I'm doing something and it all disappears and I can't get it back. I think that's the answer to that. I am regard myself as a technophobe because I don't like modern technology. And uh, Simon had to show me, which has been quite useful actually, how to pause the television. If I want to go for a pee in the middle of something, uh, I'll do it and start it again. And I didn't know that until two weeks ago. Richie can't get over that fact either. He marvels at it every time he pauses something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last one, Rog. Which of your children do you think are most like you? I could... Say, I think which one of them I think is most unlike me, apart from Sean, she's a different sex, and in any case, you can't regard her. I would think Neil is most unlike me, but then I don't know him very well, and I may be quite wrong. I think Richard is probably more like me than Simon. Uh, Richie's very like you. 
and becoming more so as time goes by. Well, I should think that was a compliment. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's it. That was lovely. Thank you much. Okay. Very good. Thank you. I enjoyed that.